Welcome to the Nicholas 11X12 technology. Today we're looking at the PowerColor Radeon HD 7850 2GB GDDR5 graphics card from AMD. This card uses the new 28 nanometer architecture and should perform very well. But now let's take a look at the box which I have here. Once again it's the PowerColor Radeon HD 7850 card with 2GB of GDDR5 memory as a standard from now on. This will be a lot better for high resolutions and or multiple displays like 4 monitors like listed here. The box itself looks pretty cool and I like the design. On the back of the box the basic specifications are listed on the left side and below you'll see the rating for different tasks. On the right are the special features this card offers like the AMD App Acceleration, HD3D, Crossfire, DirectX 11 and the new GCN architecture. But now let's take a look inside. As you can see it comes with another box and in there is the graphics card right away and the anti-static bag. But I'll show it in detail later. As for the accessories you get a HDMI to DVI adapter, the standard DVI to VGA adapter for older monitors and the mini display port to display port adapter. It also comes with the PowerColor quick installation guide and inside there will be the graphics driver. Again the graphics card and the anti-static bag and I'll open it up so we can look at it. Alright here's the card with plastic and other protection. I'll quickly remove all of that so we can look at the card alone. Here it is. PowerColor used AMD's reference design which looks very beautiful and is very glossy. The color scheme of black and red matches perfectly and even the fan is red. On the side you see it's completely closed and on the back are some ventilation holes and the PCI Express 6 pin power connector. The bottom looks very nice too with the matte black PCB that I love so much. And up here is the crossfire finger for the two-way AMD crossfire configuration. And here's the other side, completely closed as well and for the outputs this card offers one DVI, one HDMI and two mini display port ports. Again ventilation holes for exhausting and if we are already talking of cooling you should see the heatsink there with the heat pipes. It's a dual slot card by the way and this actually is a PCI Express 3.0 graphics card. So yeah, as you may or not know I've always been a big fan of the reference design cards and this one looks very nice. Although this isn't the best HD 7850 on the market, it looks fairly good and is shorter than most mid-range cards from the previous generation. This means it will most likely fit in any case without any problems. Overall the design of the card including the PCB is very beautiful in my opinion. It's not heavy at all since it doesn't offer the best cooling solution but just from the looks of this card it would perform pretty good. For my personal taste it looks perfect and there's nothing I would like to change. Now to the specifications. The PowerColor Radeon HD7850 graphics card offers 2GB of GDDR5 memory and uses the Pitcairn Pro GPU. It has a core clock of 860MHz and a memory clock of 1200MHz. Also it has a 130W TDP and uses the new 28nm architecture. It comes with full DirectX 11.1 support and has a bus width of 256 bit. Here in GPU-Z the card gets detected without any problems and once again we're looking at the Pitcairn GPU that uses the new 28 nanometer technology. Lots of transistors are packed in this GPU and it's a PCIe 3.0 card which also supports DX11.1. It has 1024 shaders and again it offers 2GB of GDDR5 memory at the bus width of 256 bit. The bandwidth is pretty good too with 153.6GB per second. At the time of this video the latest drivers are installed and as you can see the card is running at stock speed. Of course you could overclock it a little but I wouldn't recommend that unless you turn up the fan speed dramatically. Now let's move on to the benchmarks. This is my test system. First is 3D Mark Vantage at the performance preset of course. The GPU score is 20163 which is a very high score for the price. You should be able to play games at maxed out settings with that score but let's take a look at 3D Mark 11 at the performance preset. My system scored P5635 which is a massive increase from what I've had before. This definitely is the evidence that this GPU will be able to handle games at ultra settings. I ran this test with the i7-3770K that I reviewed earlier before. So far I got great great results and have nothing to complain. In Cinebench release 11.5 I get 86.60 FPS in the OpenGL test which is a very very high frame rate. Actually I don't know what I have to say here since really again I can't complain. Next I ran something more demanding like the Unigine Heaven Benchmark 3.0. Settings are at DX11, Normal Tessellation, High Shaders, 4x AF, 4x AA and this all is running at 1680x1050. 
And here are the results. On average I get 48.1 FPS, 11.6 FPS on minimum and amazing 101 FPS at max. The score is 1213 which is quite high. Of course I didn't max this out but it takes graphics cards to their knees very quickly. But still I get nice acceptable frame rates and I'm really impressed so far. It really shows performance even in this demanding DirectX 11 engine. Next is the last Planet 2 benchmark at 1680 by 1050 on the highest settings including DirectX 11. I know it's a Nvidia game but in test A I get 48.1 FPS on average and rank B which is very nice. Test B is a little more demanding and we can clearly see that the frame rate dropped to a 39.2 FPS which is still quite impressive. It ranked B here too. Now I'll run Furmark at 1680 by 1050 on these settings without anti-aliasing and see how it performs. It scored 1739 points and has a frame rate of around 30 FPS on average. I ran this test 60 seconds long and it tends to push the GPUs to their limits and so we can even see how fast the temperature increases. Again there's nothing negative I can say here. Now to the game benchmarks like Dirt 3 for example at 1680 by 1050 on ultra settings. Everything is maxed out here and I get 54 FPS on minimum and good 63 FPS on average. So as you can see I can't go any higher for the settings and it's totally playable. But of course this game isn't as demanding as Battlefield 3 that I ran here at 1680 by 1050 on ultra settings but turned off the MSAA and lowered the AF to 1x. I get amazing 58 FPS on minimum, 82 FPS on average and 116 FPS at max. So really this is more than playable and so I tried running that game at fully maxed out settings. You can't go any higher. I get 40 FPS on minimum, 56 FPS on average and amazing 81 FPS at max. So it's totally playable. So just for gaming you wouldn't necessarily need a better graphics card than this HD 7850 unless you play on 3 or 4 monitors or so. I'm not saying it will perform bad on multiple monitors but the frame rates will drop. At first I couldn't believe my eyes and so I ran an extra test to make sure the results are right and they really were. I'm really speechless here, for the price it performs extremely well. Now to the temperatures. On idle I get 28 degrees celsius which are 82 degrees fahrenheit. On low the temperature goes all the way up to 76 degrees celsius which are 169 degrees fahrenheit. The ambient room temperature was at 21 degrees celsius which are 70 degrees fahrenheit when I ran the tests. So I get pretty good temperature results. Of course on load it gets a little warmer but it's in the safe region. For the reference design these are great results and I can't complain. When I'm gaming the temperature will be at 66 or 70 degrees celsius at max. So that's not a problem at all. You will even have some overclocking headroom as long as you increase the fan speed. Now to the final test the power consumption. On idle the GPU with the i7-3770K draw around 58 watts. With the GPU on load by the i7-3770K on idle I draw around 191 watts. Now when playing a game like Battlefield 3 for example at maxed out settings I draw amazingly low 175 watts. Of course it's not ultra low but compared to the performance it offers it's a lot more efficient than the previous generation of Radeon HD cards. So AMD did a great job here. The Paracolor Radeon HD 7850 2GB GDDR5 graphics card is a very good choice for enthusiasts and gamers. It offers amazing performance almost like the HD 6970 from the previous generation and consumes a lot less power. Another great benefit is the price which is a lot lower now. Because of that it has a great price performance ratio. It will be a great choice for video editing and for playing games at maxed out settings. If you want you could even connect up to 4 displays to this card. It's not loud at all, temperatures are good as well and the power consumption once again is very low compared to the performance. AMD made it more power efficient and stronger. It's a big step forward in technology and the reference design looks very nice too in my opinion. Right now at the time of this video it would be one of the very best cards to go with at this performance level and price. Pros are great price performance ratio, massive performance, then it's capable of running games on high settings without any lag, it has a very low power consumption compared to the performance, another great benefit is that it's very silent and the beautiful reference design makes this card perfect. And so I can't name any cons, I give this beast of a graphics card a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.